So welcome back, everybody. We're having another quick conversation with Kevin. Kevin is an, our, our resident expert in literature review. He is the chief executive of Nestor's Knowledge, a sponsor of this channel. So thanks very much for that, Kevin. And he's going to teach us a little bit today about screening your papers. So let's imagine you've done a search, right? You've done your literature search, and we've actually done a video on that. So check it out if you haven't. And now you've landed up with a big, a big pile of papers, and you need to go through them and decide which ones are relevant for your particular literature review. Literature review. And uh, you don't know how to go about that. How do you choose the criteria? How do you do the screening? The whole thing is a little bit intimidating. You sometimes end up with too many papers, which could be a search problem. Before I ask Kevin to say anything, sorry, Kevin, I haven't even given, given you a chance to say hello yet. We have a cheat sheet. So at the end of this video or in the, in the description below, click on the link, click on the card at the end of this video. You get a cheat sheet, how to do a lit review. You're going to love it. It's free of charge, no strings attached. So Kevin, talk to us. Search screening. What is that? How do you do it? How do you do it wrong? Talk to me. Great questions, and I, uh, you sped through some of the big issues that I've encountered in my career, and that I'm sure other researchers do as well. Uh, when you're encountering screening problems, and so let's let's set the stage. You've run a literature search. You brought back records from a database of interest, maybe several databases. Um, in nested knowledge, we actually automatically deduplicate those for you, and we set you up with a screening queue, and you just have to pick the type of screening you want to do. But let's say that we're just talking about screening in general. Screening in general, your big problems are going to be you didn't find all the articles you should include or you found way too many articles that you shouldn't include. And so- yeah, I've been there, there been there, done both of those things <laughs> many times. And so the first thing on our, on our cheat sheet is really addressing how does, should your screening go back and affect your search? And this is part of our philosophy that uh, a review is a living project. It's not just something that you can keep up to date in the future. It's also something okay. you should change based on what you find. So if your search is finding thousands of irrelevant results, you should screen the first you hundred. You've done back. something wrong, go back <laughs> and revisit your strategy. And I basically think of it as simple uh, expansion and narrowing. So if you want to expand your search, all you need to do is add additional uh, terms that are ORed in. And if you want mm -hmm. to narrow it, you add additional terms that are ANDed in. So right. restrictive for the latter and expansive for the former. That will get you uh, uh, in the direction you want. If you want to find more articles, expand. If you want to find fewer articles, narrow. Right. If you're not finding any articles on topic, that's yet again, uh, you've done something wrong. Research. You've done something wrong. Okay, start again. Go back to the drawing board. But let's say that you get past those first 100 articles in whatever screening mode you're using. Like, this is going to be our final search. We're going to run forward with these articles. What are the problems we actually encounter in the screening process? Now, I think that there are a couple here, and, and we have a couple of ways we can address them. The first is you screen incorrectly, right? So you read the abstract for an article. You think, you know, we're, we're doing a project on, you know, randomized controlled trials only. I don't think this is an RCT. I'm going to exclude it. But if you're wrong, what happens with that article? You've missed, you've missed a paper. Yes. And you've missed a paper that in the end, right, there's some, I've published reviews with three papers in them, right? So you can have a literature review of as, th as few as three underlying studies. If right. you're missing one of those, you're missing a third of your eventual right. outputs that you need right. to create. So it's a major problem to have basically a false uh, positive or a false negative in screening. Mm -hmm. There are several ways that you can get around that. And I'm just going to demonstrate one of them very quickly in our software. As you can see, this is actually the screening phase for a project that I've previously published on acute ischemic stroke randomized controlled trials. And in nested knowledge, we set this up so that you can ensure that not only are you configuring your reasons such that they're very obvious to every reviewer in your team, uh, but also so that you can have different modes where you might check and correct that false exclusion that we talked about just a second ago. Okay. So in nested knowledge, the way that you do it is you just run over to configuration. You'd add any reason you want to exclude an article. And this should be part of your study design, right? Your study, your research question should drive your study design, should drive what sort of evidence you're accepting, such mm -hmm. as. We don't want any articles that aren't about stroke. We don't want any articles that aren't RCTs. We don't want anything that was published before uh, modern practices in stroke care and so on. We create those exclusion reasons and then they're presented to us during the screening phase where I can just scroll through and find any that might be applicable. So really easy, transparent screening reasons are I, I think a very low level thing, but people people overestimate how well they've you know really cohered with a nests or a project's goal. And, and he has a quick, really he has a quick question, Kevin. And I actually know the answer to this because I do use this platform. But I'm going to ask it because I know people might be asking this. Can you identify screening criteria on the fly? So you, you can you, make this up. I could come in exactly. here and I could say you didn't have them in the plan, but as you work, you realize that this should have been a criteria, and you can make a screening criteria as you're going along. And then it will show up as a criterion that I can use on any subsequent study. 
So if you need to create a reason on the fly, we support that. Actually, again, you can probably hear a lot of what I'm saying. You can do a lot of things on the fly. Adjust your search, adjust your screening. You can even create new tags in our in our tagging hierarchy on the fly. You're in a study, you find nice. content of interest, create it on the fly. That's that's the way to do reviews. Uh, but let's say that I, I apply the uh, worst study of all time exclusion reason to this article. Right. I may be incorrect. That might not be the worst article of all time, and it maybe it's worth including. So uh, we can actually set up a screening mode where we have dual screening. So I screen, you screen, and then we have a third and right, smart right, 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 right. agreements. And that and is often considered best practice if you're doing a systematic lit review, is to have a second person doing screening. Right, good. And then you look for concordance. You look for concordance, and you also find those disagreements. The uh, oh, And you review them, right? You, you find the disagreements yeah. and you reconsider them. So if, if I then take my nest, and so if I need, if I wanted to start this nest with uh, uh, another person, I would have to invite you. You would have to go through and screen those articles. But with nested knowledge, if I want a second person, but I don't want to be a person, I can actually configure my nest for robot screening. And so that means that I'm going to replace that second person with an AI that was trained based on my own screening. So I screen 50 articles to train the model. Once the model has been trained, it kicks in and it can predict inclusion or exclusion for every single wow. underlying article. So by toggling the robot screener on, I can see the predictions for every included article, for every excluded article. I won't get into the details here, but we cross validate. We make sure that it's accurate. We give an accuracy estimate. We give a threshold that you should set. Wow, this one's 97% accurate. Uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. Great, great robot screening there. It tells us the threshold it's going to apply. And then I can run right back over to that dual screening. And instead of having to have you invited, I can screen this and then another adjudicator can come through and see that the robot excluded this and I excluded it. Therefore, it may have actually been the worst study of all time. Right, 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 right. right. That's amazing. I didn't know about this feature, by the way. So I used nested knowledge, didn't know about this. And I almost want to go out and use it now just to have the, just to do it. it looks like just so to much tell fun. someone that a robot yes. screened your articles, right? That sounds amazing. I love it. Uh, Kevin, are we going to need to cut this short because I have to go home to my kids, but uh, any any final thoughts, uh, advice, suggestions, con considerations, pontifications from yourself? One major pontification, and that is that it, throughout your literature review, you need to make sure you're tracking yourself. So whether it's in nested knowledge or not, make sure you're generating for your screening a Prisma chart that shows all the reasons that we applied to the underlying research. Yeah, and I mean, nested that, knowledge will do this for you, hey? Exactly. So yeah, nested knowledge will automatically it. generate this, but if you're not using nested knowledge, make sure you're creating a Prisma diagram using the Prisma 2020 guidance that yeah. shows where records came in, where records were excluded and shows the final records included in your review. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to replicate your review. And, yeah, and that's the point review. of good science, right? You want it to be replicable by a third party. Yeah, exactly. Very so good. that's it. That's screening that's in a nutshell. That's well, that was very useful. Knowledge. I'm excited about yeah. the robot screening. So that's new to me. Love it. Absolutely love it. That's awesome. But I'm going to talk about that for the rest of the day. Um, Kevin, listen, if you're watching this video and you, and you need to do a lit review, there is a card on the screen right now if you're watching this on youtube click on the card you'll get the lit, the, the lit review cheat sheet for free no strings you'll love it uh don't ever change don't do drugs always do your best speak to you soon take care and thanks kevin bye thanks everybody